I thought I was done making rig videos for the Canon C70. I already made a couple for different situations and although I really liked them, none of them really felt perfect. But then when I started rigging out my Red Komodo, I got inspired again. And now I started from scratch and I built the most versatile rig for the Canon C70 ever. And I can say that this is near perfect. I can use this rig for commercial work, for personal work, documentary work, but also mount it onto my shoulder when I need to. And I can use this in all kinds of different situations. So in this video, we will go over all the parts that I use and all the situations that you can build this camera rig out. Let's start with our base configuration. And this is the bright tangerine cage. And I've used different cages before from shape, small rig, as well as tilter. And although they were really good at some things, they weren't really versatile and all of them had some kind of drawbacks and compromises. But with the bright tangerine kit, I feel like it does everything I want. So let's start with the base plate. The base plate consists of a riser plate and that one is important. So whenever you get a rail system for your camera, you need to get a rail system for your specific camera and not just a generic one. Because there's a lot of things that we will attach to our rails and I will talk about this a little later in the video that have a standard height. So you need a standardized base plate that gets your rails to the perfect position so that all of your accessories actually align perfectly. Then attached to our riser plate is the Bright Tangerine Left Field 3 kit. And this one holds your rails, but it also does a couple more things. Let's start with our 15 millimeter rods. And those are from Amazon, they're carbon fiber, and I will link all of these things down in the description below as well as those. They're really lightweight, they're sturdy, they look cool, so that's why I chose them. And I chose the 30 centimeter version. I chose the 30 centimeter rail version because we need them to extend towards the back a little bit because we want to attach our V-mount plate here. We also want to cover the entire front of it so that we can attach a focus motor and some other supports that I will talk about a little later. On the bottom of our left field 3 kit, we have a dovetail quick release plate. And this one is absolutely amazing. If you don't know what a dovetail is, I can show you right here. So we have different versions of dovetails. This, for example, is a dovetail and this is a really big one. And you can attach your regular tripod plate to it, then attach this to your tripod and have the dovetail on top of it. But if you don't want to have such a huge thing, you can also just use a way smaller dovetail, for example. This is the dovetail that actually came with the cage. And as you can see, this is really small and you can attach it to any of your tripods. And the cool thing is that if you have this attached to your tripod, you can with ease just side load your camera, just put it on here, clamp it shut, and then it is secure on your tripod. And it's really important that you do have the side loading mechanism because the more stuff you attach to your camera, you can't really slide it onto your regular tripod anymore because there might be some screws in the way, some accessories, a V-mount battery, whatever. So it's really handy that you can just attach it from the side and you don't have to slide it on there. And if you have multiple cameras with dovetail quick release plates, you don't have to have a tripod plate mounted to each individual camera and you can just hook them up to all of your tripods in seconds. Okay, let's get rid of our plate again, just like this, snaps out and we're good to go again. Attached to our base plate is the Bright Tangerine side plate. And this is pretty cool because now we have more options to mount stuff and I have a small, small rig cable clamp that you can just open like this and then you can put your cables in here. Another piece that is specific for the Canon C70 is the HDMI clamp. And everybody knows I hate HDMI ports, even if it's a full size HDMI, because they keep breaking and the port is really fragile. So with this HDMI clamp, we can secure our HDMI port as well as our HDMI cable. The majority of the side plate is also a NATO rail, so we can attach even more stuff to the side of our Canon C70 when we want to. But like I said, I chose this cable clamp for now, but we also have 3 8 strength as well as 1 quarter inch thread holes to attach whatever we like. Our side plate is now attached to our top plate. And this is why I love the Bright Tangerine system. Because a lot of other cages that I had in the past, they were either connected via a top plate and a separate base plate, but they weren't connected to each other. And since we don't really have a lot of mounting options on the Canon C70 and they're all not really great, and especially on the top plate, we only have one mounting screw, 
it never really felt tight and secure. But here we have so many mounting points where we go from the bottom plate over to the side plate and then connect everything to the top plate. So now everything is rock solid. Our top plate is also really spacious. We have a full size NATO rail up front, then we have a small rail in between, and then we have a lot of mounting options on the back. If you want to attach a microphone, we have a cold shoe on the side plate as well. Most of the times when using the Canon C70, I actually use the speed booster and I use it with Sigma Art or even Canon zoom lenses. But sometimes I also use it with cine lenses like this Sigma 18 35 and then I throw on some RF to EF adapter. This one is from Mikey, but I also have one from Canon and I just choose whatever is available right now. Now let's talk about our battery solution. I like to run everything of V-Mount batteries. All of my cameras that I'm using are using V-Mount batteries. All of the accessories, monitors, everything is powered via V-Mount batteries. So I don't have to show up on set with seven different chargers and eight types of different batteries. I just need to bring a lot of V-Mount batteries and chargers and that's it. So now let's attach our V-Mount battery. And I chose a IDX V-Mount battery plate because we need a V-Mount battery plate that delivers a lot of power through the DTAP port and the IDX plate delivers up to 80 watt maximum. It is also rated for a DC output of 16.8 to 11 volts. And this is what we need to power our Canon C70. It also has a DC out via USB-C that also delivers nine volt, which is great for powering external accessories. On the bottom, I attached a 15 millimeter rod clamp so we can attach it to the rods on our camera. We also need a special cable to power our Canon C70. The one that I'm using is a DTAP to DC. And I believe this one is from Shape and I will also link this one down in the description below. So all we need to do now is we need to take our v mount battery plate and slide it onto the 15 millimeter rods on the back of our Canon C70 and tighten it with the screws on each side. The cool thing about this setup is that we could technically use a BPA30 battery inside of the camera and then hot swap our accessories and batteries because we still have power inside of our camera. I don't really see a necessity for this. So what I do, I use the hole that usually the battery goes in for cable management and I stow away all the excess cable. So before tightening down the screws, I usually take all of my cables and just stow them away. I also rarely use the touchscreen monitor when using the Canon C70 in a shoulder mount or in a handheld rig because the monitor is fragile and I run everything off an external monitor that I will talk about a little later. But you could obviously just slide it out a little bit and then just open the monitor and use it if you want to. So now that everything is tightened down, we just take the DC cable and plug it directly into our Canon C70. So now all we need to do is take a V-mount battery and clip it right onto the IDX battery plate. I'm mostly using V-Bob V-mount batteries and the size depends on the size of my lens so that I can balance it out. If I have a heavier lens, I use a bigger V-mount battery and if I have a smaller lens, I usually go for a smaller V-mount battery. But I usually sit somewhere in the middle and use a 150 watt because that gets me a couple of hours of runtime, including powering all of my accessories and it's usually a great way to balance the rig out. So the next thing we're going to attach is a top handle and I use a top handle from small rig that is attached via a NATO rail and it's my favorite top handle for multiple reasons. One, it's really comfortable. You can take your index finger and just slide it up front and it gives you a really secure and also comfortable feeling even if you have to hold it for multiple hours a day. Two, it has a lot of different mounting points. On the front, we have a quarter inch thread with airy locating pins. And this is a great way to securing a monitor mount, for example, or other accessories. On top, we have a cold shoe to add even more accessories. But the number one reason why I chose this over the Bright Tangerine top handle, for example, which also has great mounting points and is also really comfortable, is this built-in Allen key. Because this comes in really clutch if you need to tighten down a monitor mount or if you just need to screw on and off something on your rig. And just having this accessible at all times on your top handle is the main reason why I chose the small rig top handle. So now all we need to do is we need to take it via the NATO rail, attach it to our top plate, tighten it down, and now we have a top handle. Next up, let's attach our monitor. And here are different ways to attach the monitor. Usually, if I know that I'm not running a shoulder mount setup, I'm going to attach it via the front quarter inch thread and air locating pins. 
This for me is the most comfortable position to have an external monitor because I can still swivel it and there is a small rig mount that I use all the time. I can't show it to you right now because we're using it on the red Komodo. But if you do want to run a shoulder rig, there's different ways of doing this. And I chose a small rig monitor mount that is attached via a cold shoe on top of our top handle. And the reason for this I will talk about later, but let's just put this on top of our top handle right now, tighten this down. And as I've already mentioned, it is definitely the best option to attach this and tighten this down with an Allen key, because now we don't have any wiggle and this is where this key comes in really handy. On the monitor side, it's attached via a quarter inch screw. Unfortunately, there's no locating pins and there is no small rig monitor mount or any monitor mount that I found that works well with a relocating pins on both sides. I don't know why, but this would be the obvious choice for me if there was one, but this is still secure enough if we really tighten it down with the Allen key. My monitor of choice is this seven inch SWIT monitor and this is really high brightness with 3000 nits and I really like it. The overall menu system isn't that great, but to be fair, I never really use it. I use all of the onboard tools that I have on the Canon C70, like false color, peaking, so I don't really need anything from the monitor itself. It also has a really slow startup time, but this is also usually not a problem because once on set, I power everything up and then I let the battery run out and I switch it. So I don't have to constantly turn it off and on, so the slow startup time isn't really an issue for me. Since, unfortunately, the Canon C70 doesn't have SDI, we're going to attach this via HDMI. And I'm using this HDMI high-speed cable that I found on Amazon, and I will link it down in the description below. And it worked well for me so far, but I have multiple HDMI cables. I've tried a lot of them, and some of them broke, some of them didn't. Anyway, so this is attached via the HDMI port on the camera, and then we attach it to our monitor itself. We also need to power our monitor, so we need a DTAP to DC port cable. And this one came with a monitor, but if it didn't, then you can also buy it on Amazon. And this we're going to plug into the side of our VMON plate. So now on one side of our VMON plate, we have a DTAP to DC port to power our monitor. And on the other side of our VMON plate, we have a DTAP to DC port to power the Canon C70. But beware, those are not the same cables because the DC port needs a different kind of cable on the camera than it does on the monitor. Now we're going to plug this into the monitor and this is a barrel locking cable. So it's really nice and secure. The next thing we're going to attach is the Bright Tangerine Haspa system. And this is really versatile. You can run it as a shoulder mount, but I actually mostly use it for something else. Let me show you. The Bright Tangerine Hespa system consists of this 15 mm or 19 mm hand grip bridge. And then you have these extension rods as well as two handles. And those handles are really comfortable. Those are the most comfortable handles I have ever used. And you also have a quick way of adjusting everything or you could just take the side handle and attach it directly to the bridge if you don't want to have the extensions. We're going to open it up and then we're going to slide it down. We're not going to slide it down too far, just like so. Tighten it down and now we have our grips up top. And like I said, most of the times I'm not even using this as a shoulder rig, but I'm using this for something else. I'm going to take the handles and I'm going to change them 180 degrees on both sides. And this is done by just quickly unscrewing this area reset quick release and tighten it back down and now what we can do is we can just take these top handles press the camera against our body and now we have a really stable way of shooting handheld footage if you use this with autofocus lenses we don't have to control the lens itself or if we have a first AC that's pulling focus, we can just run and gunning with this. And again, we're really stable and this is really comfortable. And I can also change positions if I wanna go lower or if I wanna go a little bit higher. When being on bigger sets and I rig out the camera even heavier with wireless transmissions and more accessories in a focus motor and have a first AC, I typically use an easy rig. And then what I do is I'm going to take the right top handle, going to open up the extension arm, 
Then I'm going to turn this all the way towards the back. Then I will take the handle and also change this 180 degrees. And now I have a really great way of maneuvering my camera from both sides and I can just shoot this from the hip. I could do this really comfortably without an easy rig and this again I could just hold for hours but if you have it attached to an easy rig and it's just in front of your body it's a really nice way to make subtle pan movements and you can maneuver your camera really easily. The next accessory I'm going to add is our Tilta Mirage matte box. And I basically have this attached to my camera at all times because I'm using mist filters a lot, but there's also other ways this can actually help your rig. The way I have this attached is via the 15 millimeter rod clamps. So I'm going to slide this onto our 15 millimeter rods, just like. So let's open this up, attach this and then we can tighten this down. And here it comes in really clutch that we do have a riser plate that is made for the Canon C7 because now it fits perfectly onto our camera. And if we were to use just a regular plate, then this might not actually line up and we would have a lot of problems of actually lining our matte box with our lens. Now I wanna show you something else and you might not be able to see this, so you might have to take my word for it. But if we use heavier cine lenses and we have a focus motor attached, then there is some play in the RF mount. So if you look here and I try to just move the camera, then you will be able to see that the mount itself is actually shifting from left to right. And if you attach a strong motor, which you might need for bigger cine lenses like this one or my Tokina 11 to 20, then you will actually see this in the footage because there is some play in the RF mount. When using the speed booster, you can actually lock down the speed booster and attach it directly to the Canon C70. But with your regular RF to EF mounts or even RF to PL mounts, you can't. And that is actually a big problem because when showing up on big sets and you want to pull focus wirelessly with a strong motor, that becomes an issue. So here we can also tighten down our matte box. So now it's attached directly to the 15 millimeter rods and it also tightens down the lens. So now this is rock solid and we can pull focus easier without having to worry about the image shifting. This isn't necessarily the best way to tighten down your lens and there's different options. There's also this new thing called lens cuff, which I also used in the past, which is also amazing. Or you could just use a standard lens support mount that also attaches via the 15 millimeter rods. And again, you need a base plate that is specifically made for your camera in order for this to line up. When using this on bigger shoots, I attach even more stuff to my camera. I could even attach a second V-mount battery with longer rods, a wireless transmission system, multiple motors so that we can pull focus wirelessly as well as change our iris or the zoom wirelessly. So you can even build this out way bigger if you wanted to. But for this, I'll just stop it here and let's talk about the shoulder mount system. The Bright Tangerine Casper system also comes with a shoulder pad. And this is not only really comfortable, but it also comes with a dovetail quick release system. So all we need to do is we need to align it underneath our body and then tighten our screw and that's it. Now we can take our camera and put it onto our shoulder. And again, this is really comfortable. So now I can't obviously see what I'm shooting, so we need to find a better solution for our monitor. And this is the reason why I mounted the monitor on top with the cold shoe and not up front where I would usually attach it when I'm not going shoulder mount. The way I am going to attach my monitor is via this iFootage Magic Arm. And this one is not only really strong and it's rated up to 2 to 6 kilos depending on the angle, but it also comes with a really smart quick release system that I'm going to show you now. We have two of these little pins and they come either with a quarter inch screw or with a 3 8 inch screw and they also have airy locating pins. And we're going to take this and we're going to attach this to the front of our top handle, screw this down and then we can take the latch and just tug it away like this. I also have another one that I attached to the top of my monitor. I'm going to show you why. Now I'm going to detach the monitor from our original monitor mount, just like so, and then we have our magic arm and the magic arm comes with these little 
quick release attachments. So we're going to open them and then we can just slide in this, tighten it down and we do the same thing on the front of our monitor just like so. Slide this in, tighten this down and then we can bring our monitor in position. And we don't have to change anything, we don't have to change the cabling and we can just bring this in position to where we feel it is the most comfortable. So now when we found a comfortable position for the monitor, we can just put the camera back onto our shoulder. And now we have our seven inch monitor right in front of us. We could just play around with the angle. We could just move it again. And now we have a really nice and comfortable shoulder mount system. We're using autofocus lenses. We have no problem of pulling focus and we can just use the camera. We can also use all the buttons on the side and usually I know all the buttons by heart. So if I want to change the ND filters or if I want to stop start recording, we can also do this. And this is a really great way of putting the Canon C7D onto your shoulder. When I wrapped up filming yesterday, I forgot one crucial part about my newfound rig and that is an SDI converter. I already complained about that I don't like HDMI and in most cases, it's fine, I can just use an external monitor via HDMI and I don't really need anything else. But there's a lot of scenarios where I do need SDI. For live streaming, for example, or when we're on set and we're shooting with multiple cameras. And this is what the C70s are perfect for. And I do a ton of multicam shooting. And we use our Atomos SE19 as a director or a client monitor. And why we love this monitor is because it is one of the rare monitors that can output four signals at the same time. So when we have two, three, or even four cameras, we can see all of our sources at the same time. The caveat with this is that it only works with SDI. So in order to make this work on my two Canon C70s, as well as on my Canon R5C, I'm using an SDI converter. And this one converts our HDMI signal to SDI. The issue that I found in the beginning is that, and I talked about this in several C70 videos already, that when we want to display a lot over HDMI, we can't. The Canon C70 for some reason is incapable of it. It does have a view assist feature, but I would never use it because for some reason it's overexposed. It's not exactly what we want. So we need to find a way to also output a lot on top of our HDMI signal. And this is where the Blackmagic Design Micro HDMI converters come in really handy because you can hook them up to your computer and then you can input a custom LUT. And that is amazing because now I use my C-Log2 to Rec709 LUT. I put it on top of this micro converter and now the signal that goes out from my C70 via HDMI and then is being looped through the SDI port going out has this LUT already enabled. So when I hook it up to either live streaming or an external monitor like our Atomos 19 SE, it already has the proper LUT on top. On the one side, we have an HDMI in, and this is how we connect it to our Canon C70. And we also have a USB-C port. And we need this to either power the camera, which is a little bit of a drawback because it requires more cabling, but we can use the USB-C port of our V-mount battery plate. And we can also hook it up to our computer to input the LUT. I also found this little piece on Amazon, which is from a company called Cambet, I believe, and you can hook it up to your converter and then you have cold shoe mount. And we can just use this on the rear end of our top handle. And now we have a secure way of having two SDI ports on our Canon C70. So there you have it. This is my absolute favorite rig of the Canon C7D for putting it on the shoulder, for shooting with it in higher capacities, handheld, as well as on sticks. But what if you want to put this on a gimbal? Disclaimer, I have two Canon C70s. So one of my Canon C70s is always completely stripped down and it basically lifts on the gimbal, whereas the other camera is rigged out like this, so I can shoot with it handheld, sticks, shoulder, etc. But what if we only have one Canon C70 and we want to go quickly from this monstrosity onto a gimbal? And this is where the Bright Tangerine system actually shines. I went with the advanced system, I believe, or the basic system. I don't even know what it's called, but it doesn't have another quick release. 
but there is a version of it that has a DJI quick release system in there. And this is the one that I have for my RED Komodo. So right now I'm going to overlay footage from my RED camera so you can see the difference. And here you have two quick release systems. Number one is the bottom that attaches to the dovetail. And then there's another one in between that you can just take off and then you can strip down the camera really easily and put it onto a gimbal. So there you have it. This is my absolute favorite Canon C70 rig for all of my use cases. And I can bring this onto really big sets and I can rig it out as big as I want to. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, then please give it a thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow. And consider subscribing for more videos about the Canon C70 and cinematography and lighting breakdowns in general. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you on the next one.